Hey, Drew Believers, England Teen here with another episode of Comic Book Origins. This is the show where we look at any comic book character or comic book hero, comic book villain or team or even an object. I'll even do the Batmobile. I don't care. It's a lot of fun doing all of these. This time around, we're looking at the first appearance of a character known as the Unknown Soldier, created by Robert Kaniger and Joe Kubert. Now, Robert Kaniger's name you're going to notice anytime we talk about DC and the Silver Age, and Joe Kubert's name is going to come up a lot whenever we talk about good comics. The name was indeed inspired by the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Now, he's a character who survived an injury. His fate, He keeps his face always wrapped up, and he is the person that nobody knows, but he can be anybody as he goes about helping people. Before we begin, I'd like to thank everybody for clicking like, share, and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Make sure those notifications are on for YouTube. And if you don't mind helping out the channel financially, let me work for my money. Go on over to Ko-Fi and commission a video. You tell me in what category do you want me to talk about and what hero, what villain, what character, what team or object you want me to talk about, I will do it. This one, thank you very much, Jim Sorensen, was the one who had commissioned the Unknown Soldier, who made his first appearance in Our Army at War, number 168. Let's get this party started. Alrighty, starting off with the cover, it does have the DC checkerboard, and I do believe there's a history of comics to talk about that coming up at some point in time. Love the image. Of course, we do have it marred a little bit because DC was worried, how do you sell comics? Marvel's kicking their butts, and they thought they were doing it by having a lot of words on their cover. But we do have Sergeant Rock wrestling a minigun and beating up two Nazis while one of them's trying to shoot him in the head. This is a very dynamic cover right here. Sergeant Rock of Easy in I Knew the Unknown Soldier. I knew the Unknown Soldier. Yeah, me. Sergeant Rock of Easy Company. I met him on a stormy day just like this. And then we see a coffin. It says on the side, Here rests in honor, glory, an American soldier. And we see another soldier looking upon it. Easy was trying to cross a river when someone lowered the boom on us. Drink deep, you combat happy Joes, and head underwater for the beach gun that's chopping us up into hamburger. So we see the boys of EZ Company thrown into the water, and just as soon as they pop their heads back up, the Germans start firing at them, and one of the guys notice they're up in the cave, and Sergeant Rock says, those guns are looking down our throats. One of them replies, what do you mean looking, the they're about to yank out our tonsils. Sergeant Rock just feels the burden of leadership and says, Let's go, you miserable dog faces. Let's go all the way to those guns. The Jerry's lifted their fire as we rushed the beach. They're ignoring us to clobber the rest of the outfit. They figure they can always stomp us if we get too close to them. And those pale-faced Lemules are figuring we'll climb close enough to fill their steel pots with grenades. The enemy let us get halfway to him. then flatten out and pray for a miracle, you sinners. This is the end of the line. They're using our helmets as bullseyes. Just when it looked like Easy was being blasted off the vine and squashed in the water, I saw him. Am I flipping or do I really see a G.I. swinging down from the top of the hill like he was a human fly? I had to give that doe foot A for guts as he was swung right in front of the gun's Talk about sticking your head inside the lion's mouth before dinner. That Joe is gambling that he'll swing past those gun muzzles in between bursts. If he loses, there'll be nothing left of him but dog tags. But the GI makes it pretty safe, and as he swings down and then back up, he throws grenades into the bunker, causing all of the Jerry's ammunition to explode. Sergeant Rock says to himself, he just earned all the medals, and I can't wait to get up there and meet him, but when he does... The soldier's gone. So Sergeant Rock has the men hoof it double time in hopes of reaching the mysterious soldier. It stopped raining by the time we reached our position, but fog coming down like a sheet around a ghost. I didn't like it. The Jerry's could send a whole panzer unit at us, and we wouldn't even see their tanks till they were flattening our helmets like pizza pies. Ice cream soldier, bulldozer, poke your nose up the left flank as far as you can till you contact the enemy, then pull back. Champ, you and Wild, move out. I'd gone about a mile in the milky soup when I had a feeling, only the feeling that someone's following me. I'll step behind the tree and clobber him when he passes. Play in hide-and-seek, Sarge. 
Don't forget, we engines invented the art of scouting. I'm tagging along, so you shouldn't feel lonesome out here all by yourself. Ah, go back to the reservation, little sure shot. I was wondering if I was going to need to pull out my little avatar here so I can knit and or pick any part of this book. So far, so good, right? So anywho, then he says, Well, I walked about a mile. No, not by yourself. You're the one that you, you are in command. Two, there is a lot of space between you and then a mile and then your men. The whole freaking enemy platoon could walk through and you wouldn't notice it. So yeah, calling BS on that particular one. And just to prove my point, as they're walking back, little Sure Shot raises his thumb and Sergeant Rock says, Well, we were ready for him because Sure Shot raised his thumb. I knew it was going to be there, so we were able to beat him up. You're in the United States Army. I am sure they gave you rifles. Easy Company Sergeant Rock in the unforgettable conclusion of I Knew the Unknown Soldier. Little Sure Shot and I had KO'd two of the six buzzards who had jumped us. The four who were left belted us, but good. I swam out of the fog I was in to find a familiar figure once again battling for us. It's him, the soldier who saved our necks on that cliff. I've got a lint in my hand. Little Sure Shot's still out. I spring up and stood back to back with him in the milky fog. You sure show up at the right time, soldier. I can't wait to shake your hand for all the help you've given easy and we see the two heroes battling the Nazis. We had whittled the odds down to one apiece, but uh, these characters are tougher than stale pumpernickel. The fog was like a sea of milk in which the tough SS guy and I dropped for a fight to the death. And that is indeed what we see on this page, but can I just say we need to retire that whole fog is like milk thing? We've heard it a little bit too much in this particular issue. So the men gather back together, and of course Sarge tells them about the unknown soldier, but nobody else has seen him, so they all just believe it. Sarge going a little bit batty from being on the front line for all this time and not taking a break, and he is actually the soldier that's kicking all sorts of tail. So much so that even Sergeant Rock himself is doubting what he's seen. Snow begins to fall, and Sergeant Rock, because he seems to be really bad at delegating responsibility, decides to take the bazooka because he's afraid that tanks will be able to roll right up on him and they won't be able to see him, which is what happens. Unfortunately, there's a jam with Sergeant Rock's bazooka, but at the last moment, the unknown soldier swoops in and destroys the enemy tank. So Sarge sees the unknown soldier, and he's running towards him, and... He thinks he's waving, but as he gets closer, he realizes he's pointing at an enemy tank that suddenly shoots fire towards the sergeant, blinding him. Just as I was pressing all the panic buttons, I felt a hand on my shoulder and I heard a voice say, Easy now, Sarge. Shoulder your weapon. Bring the bazooka back to the right. You're aiming too far to the left. I'll slip the range stud forward a notch. That'll put you in business. His voice shifted to the side of me, so I knew he was standing clear. Okay, Sarge. All you have to do now is fire. He pictured it all for me. You hit j the jackpot, Sarge. That rocket blasted the stripes off that tiger. You're real. You're you're real. I, I may be flash blinded, but I can feel the heat off a burning tank and hear its ammo exploding and you're next to me. Who are you, soldier? Who are you? You named it, Sarge. I'm just another soldier like you. As he led me back to Easy, wait till my outfit sees you. Easy won't think I'm flipping. Now they won't think that I'm a candidate for the loony bin. Easy straight in front of your nose, Sarge. Wait, where are you going? My eyes began to clear slowly as... I'm going back, Sarge. I got a feeling that bad luck knocks three times and the enemy is going to slip another tank through. Might as well stop it before it reaches our lines. I stumbled after him. Wait, soldier! Wait! Wait for me! Sergeant Rock follows the unknown soldier and finds him on a frozen river where... He's going after that tank. Look out, soldier. They've set up a heavy machine gun on the ice to cover the tank. I saw it all like a nightmare as I ran to take the heat off the soldier attacking the MG. The MG's nailed him down. He, he's down. Even as I tackled the MG crew, I could see the tank will stop him to death. I've got to get him help. Something exploded in my head like a mortar shell, but even as I rammed past the MG crew and headed for the tank squatting over the soldier, he blew up the tank while it was pinning him, blowing himself up too. The next day, after a couple of outfits leapfrogged over easy, it was our turn to cross the river. 
There was a party of top brass around the tank, and they were carrying a covered stretcher. Sir, there's no way of identifying the soldier who got killed stopping this tank. He's exactly whom we want to rest in the tomb of the unknown soldier back home, a fighting man who will never be known except to God. But the brass was wrong. I may not have known his name or even seen his face, but I knew him. I knew the unknown soldier, and I'll never forget him. He'll always live in my heart. And don't forget to check out the Inferior Five! <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just not the right advertisement for the end of that particular story. Now, while I always give a, a review at the end of the video, I gotta say, How Our Army at War number 168, the first appearance of the Unknown Soldier, was good. I mean, no, there were not a lot of nits to pick here, ladies and gentlemen. It's a legitimately good story. Anyway, it was suggested that also maybe I look at the Vertigo series, and I figured, okay, I'll take a look at the first issue of that, because supposedly there was some sort of new origin story. I haven't read it. So uh, it's a four-issue run, and here is the first issue. Let's take a look. Of course, at this point, he's all wrapped up in his famous bandages and such. I do like the trench coat look. It's a Garth Ennis book, so especially during the 90s, early 2000s, so it's going to have that sort of brownish uh, hue to it. Love the cover, the burning flag in the back that's revealing the, uh, the Nazi concentration camp. Kind of makes you want to soldier on. The book starts off with an unknown soldier in the cemetery standing next to his own grave saying, One man in the right place at the right time can make a difference and win a war. Please, I need it be true just one last time. We join the story where it looks like it's the Pentagon. We're standing in front of a couple of slides with three dead bodies. We learn their names are Juan Miguel Roja and three bodyguards. And we're talking to a Agent Clyde about some information that was in another agent, Sergeant Morris's report that said while these guys were out there doing the killing, there were two witnesses. And when it's asked of Agent Clyde why they weren't killed... Agent Clyde said because they were 10 years old, and that's not his job, basically. He says that. He says, if I'm going to be required to murder two 10-year-olds, you're going to have to put that in the information before I go. And, of course, the brass don't exactly appreciate his answering like that, so they talk amongst themselves, saying that maybe this Agent Clyde guy isn't cut out for black ops, and say, well, we've got to, you know, get them shoveling crap from here on in. The guy says, yeah, I've given him a couple of boring missions. That'll teach him to keep his mouth shut, he says. So Clyde's co-workers give him the business about being a straight arrow, not going out and partying, but he just kind of takes it, throws it back at him. He's more interested in working on his case where there's a name that comes up, Joshua Markowit. He calls the FBI, but they have no real record of him, so he figures, you know what? Alrighty, you're kind of warning me away from it, but I'm going to go and do a little bit of uh, digging on my own. And so he does the footwork and ends up at an old folks home where he discovers that this Joshua Markowitz guy has already had a couple of visitors kind of asking him all the same questions. So we finally meet this Joshua Markowitz and he's Grant Morrison older because as soon as he's asked before we start the interview, can I get you something? He says some quim. Grow up, Grant. Really? And then the guy says, well, I'm here to ask you about this, uh, this uh, domestic terrorist group called California first. And then the old man says, well, I thought you were here to ask me about the soldier. And the guy says, well, no, I really don't want to get too far off the mark with this California first. But after the guy, the old man asks, well, you know, you're CIA and this seems like a federal matter. What are you doing? The man says, well, because your name came up and we're doing a cross investigation with the FBI. And he says, oh, OK, well, the last time I held a gun was when I saw the soldier. So really, he wants to tell this story. And then we cut to a sniper who's basically just targeting random people, kids, adults, anybody. She gets a call. The first name out of the phone is Joshua Markowitz. And she goes, oh, OK, this guy again. And they're like, well, he's had a lot of visitors. People are asking some stories. We need to put the hush on him. And the guy says, the first time I saw the soldier was when I was in Dachau. And then we flash back to World War II, where we see a young Joshua walk around Dachau and just lose it in his mind thinking about what the Germans did to the Jewish people when a jeep pulls up and is carrying the unknown soldier. 
The unknown soldier looks around. It's true. It's absolutely true. Have you taken prisoners, Corporal? Uh, speak up. Just guards, sir. All pretty exhausted. They didn't put up a fight. I knew coming here was a bad idea. I noticed you didn't try and stop them. This is what we've been fighting all this time. They were doing it, and I did not expect. Look at it. Look at it. Look at what our enemy has done. And the unknown soldier looks as a German guard approaches him. We, we just guard. This angers the unknown soldier as he reaches and grabs a machine gun, and turns, and fires at the guards. The CO sees the unknown soldier mowing down the Nazis and yells, Holy Jesus, get on the damn horn. Tell command that codename Unknown Soldier is totally effing lost it. Now! And the unknown soldier continues to fire. You scum, you bastards. God damn you all. For, and the CO comes up behind him. For Christ's sakes, if word gets out about this, it should. The unknown soldier hits him in the face, knocking him away. The world should know if this is what our enemies do, if this is what America must fight, then we are always right. And he begins to bludgeon a Nazi to death with the butt of the rifle. And anything we do is right. And that's when the CEO knocks him unconscious. Jesus effing Christ. We cut back to Clyde and Joshua as an old man as... He's saying, well, then we had to bury all the Kraut's bodies and never talk about it again. And then we cut back to the FBI. Clyde's in his office at his computer. His friend's giving him the business. President called while you were out. Clyde said, if you don't personally step in and mediate with Yeltsin, the birds are going to be in the air. What you doing anyway? I'm not sure. Just satisfying my curiosity, really. And he types in unknown soldier to find files not listening when he gets a phone call that says, what are you doing on your computer, Clyde? And when he answers nothing much, the person on the other end says, well, get back to work. And that, of course, worries him as it would anybody. And then we cut to Clyde's apartment where he is on the phone investigating why a guy named Henderson was talking to Makowitz before he did. And that's when the co-worker that gives him the business says she came over because she wants him to go to the party, obviously because she wants him to give her the business. He offers a cup of coffee, goes into the kitchen. She's like, hey, I don't think this apartment looks like you at all. He's like, what do you think? Uh, there should have been stars and stripes on the wall. Ha ha ha, her her her. And while he's saying that, there's a story on the radio about how the retirement home burned down and Joshua Markowitz is dead. At the time, we see the sniper and she's like, just give them the Frighteners, which means, of course, just scare them away. She shoots at the coffee cup. And that's when we see that the co-worker had walked into the kitchen, is in the line of fire, and she got shot. And the sniper has just killed an FBI agent. And that is where issue number one of volume three of The Unknown Soldier ends. It's okay. I mean, it's not bad, Grant being ran a couple of times. I just can't see a lot of people nowadays especially getting mad or upset that a soldier during wartime went off on a lot of Nazis inside of a concentration camp where there's a pile and mound of bodies. I, I think that could be forgiven, especially these days with hindsight. So there you go. Of the two books, yeah, I like the first appearance. I like Unknown Soldier 168 a bit better. Joe Kubert art, of course, is awesome. If I'm being honest, like I said, the first, first issue of Volume 3 didn't really compel me to read the rest of it. While I am not against checking out more Sergeant Rock and checking out more Unknown Soldier books or any Silver Age War stories. I did The Haunted Tank as a comic book origins Thank you very much to Fragman for commissioning that one. And I would highly recommend you guys check that one out as well, that video or even the book. Um, but otherwise, what did you think about The Unknown Soldier? What do you think about his first appearance, of uh, his first appearance in the Vertigo series? Let me know in the comments below. If you do like the video, please share, 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 get word out about the channel because YouTube has stopped sharing any of my videos. And if you are not subscribed and if you do not have that notification bell rung with notifications on, you're not going to get any videos as well. So make sure you do that. Cool things happen around these parts and I would hate for you to miss it. Like I said, awesomeness. Also, if you don't mind helping out the channel, go on over to Patreon and to Ko-Fi. Drop a dollar in the till. Just uh, help us out here and helps keep making videos for you. This is the way we're trying to make a living. 
And like I said, YouTube has really put a kibosh on that. And I like to work for my money. So go on over to Ko-Fi and commission a video. You could try any of the categories we have. Bad Comic Beatdown, Really That Bad, Comic Book Origins, Comic Books Were Better, a lot of stuff. You just put the donation in and pick the category, pick the character or the team or the storyline or whatever. We've got Origins of Minority Characters and Really That Good as well. And it's a lot of fun because I am put to task on some of these. And I very much look forward to seeing what you have in mind for this channel as well. So go on ahead, links in the description below. I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.